inverse functions. The definition of the inverse of a function says let f and g be two functions such that f of g of x equals x for every x in the domain of g and g of f of x equals x for every x in the domain of f. So what that means is if we take one function and plug it into the other function and simplify it, if we get x and then we turn that around and plug the second function or the first function into the second function and get x, that tells us that the two functions are inverses of each other. The function g is the inverse of the function f and it's uh, denoted as, this is the, the notation for the inverse, and it's read f inverse. So this would be how it would be notated. Instead of f of g of x, we would do f of f inverse of x, and then f inverse of f of x. And like I said, as long as when you simplify those, if you get x for your answer, you know that they're inverses of each other. So since they're inverses of each other, the domain of f is equal to the range of its inverse and vice versa. Okay, so they want us to show that each function is the inverse of the other. All right, so the way that we do that, like, I, like, like its definition said, if we take one function and plug it into the other function and simplify it and get x and vice versa, then we know that they're inverses of each other. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do first f of g of x. Okay, so that means we're going to take this and plug it in to the first function where the x is. Okay, so that's 4, and instead of x, I'm replacing it with x plus 7 over 4 minus 7. Okay, so now um, I want to simplify this. Well, as long as you don't break any rules, uh, this 4 and this 4 can divide out. So then that leaves me with x plus 7 minus 7. Well, 7 minus 7, that would be 0, and so I'm left with x. Okay, so it worked that way. Now we got to go the other way, the other direction. So I'm going to need to do g of f of x. So I'm going to take this function and plug it in to that function where the x is. Okay, so instead of x, I'm plugging in 4x minus 7, and that's plus 7, and that's all over 4. Okay, so there's nothing to distribute, so I can just take away these parentheses, and then when I combine my like terms, a negative 7 and a positive 7 cancel out. So that leaves me with 4x over 4, and when I divide the 4's out, I'm left with x. Okay, so when I plugged each function into the other and simplified, I got x. So that proves that the two functions are inverses of each other. In this notation, negative 1 is not an exponent, and it doesn't mean uh, 1 over f. When we're dealing with inverses, the two functions undo each other. So we just proved that two functions were inverses of each other, and now we're going to be given a function and find its inverse. So these are the steps that you have to take to find the inverse of a function. The first step is to replace f of x with y in the equation and then interchange or switch the x and the y. Solve for y. If this equation is not a function, then f doesn't have an inverse. And if the equation is a function, then it does have an inverse. 
If f has an inverse, replace y in step 3 with f inverse of x. And then you can check it by showing that the two are inverses of each other. Okay, so let's find the inverse of the following. All right, so the first step was to replace f of x with y. The next step was to switch the x and the y. Okay, and then we're going to solve for y. All right, so to solve for y, I'm going to subtract 7. And I get x minus 7 equals 2y, divide by 2. And that gives me um, y is equal to x minus 7 over 2. And then I would replace the y with the f inverse notation. And that is the inverse of the function. Okay, so let's do the same thing with b. The first step is to replace f of x with y. Switch the x and the y. and then solve for y. Okay, I'm going to divide by 4. Alright, how do you think I can get that cube off of the y? What is the opposite of cubing a number? Taking the cube root. Okay, so um, the cube and the cube root would cancel each other out. So once I have y by itself, I can rewrite it as uh, the inverse function. So f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 1 over 4. And that would be my inverse. Okay, let's try one more. What's the first step? Replace f of x with y. Alright, what's the next step? Switch the x and the y. Okay, and then we want to solve for y. So I'm going to add 1. And I have x plus 1 equals 3 over y. Okay, so I'm trying to solve for y, and y is in the denominator. So I first have to get it out of the, den out of the denominator. And I would do that by multiplying both sides of the equation times y. Okay, so I have y times x plus 1 equals 3, and then I'm going to divide both sides by x plus 1. Okay, so now the y is by itself, and I'm going to replace it with f inverse of x equals 3 over x plus 1. Now, if you'll remember when we were talking about functions, we could look at the graph of a function and determine whether or not it was a function by using the vertical line test. And the vertical line test said if we take a vertical line and pass it across the graph, of the graph, if it touched the graph in more than one spot at a time, then it was not a function. Well, to determine if a function has an inverse that is a function, we can use a horizontal line test. So the horizontal line test is the same principle, 
we take a horizontal line and if it touches the graph the line and more if the graph touches the line in more than one spot of the, at a time then it does not have an inverse that's a function Okay, so let's test this. Would this graph have an inverse function? Yes, it would because it only touches our horizontal line in one spot at a time. What about this one? Nope, it would not have an inverse that's a function. All right, what about this one? Even though um, you might think that, that that would touch it in more than one spot at a time, it's actually um, slanted, so it it would not touch the graph in more than one spot at a time and neither would this one so all of these would have graphs that are functions except for this one right here uh, have inverses that are functions sorry one-to-one -one functions are functions in which two, no two different ordered pairs have the same second component so if you'll remember to determine if um, a relation was a function it couldn't have the same first uh, it couldn't have the same x value the x value couldn't be repeated well it's the opposite when we're looking to see if a function has uh, an inverse that's a function if we look at the ordered pairs and they have the same y value then it doesn't have an inverse that's a function um, when we're looking at the graphs of inverses of functions the inverse of the function would be reflected about the line y equals x on the graph. So if we were to look at a graph on the Cartesian coordinate system, if we had a function, its inverse would reflect across this line. So this is the line y equals x. So you would see that it reflects across that line if it's the inverse of the function. Um, also, when two functions are inverses of each other, if we have a point on the graph AB, then the point BA will be on the graph of its inverse. So all the points on a graph, if you flip the X and the Y, those points are going to be on its inverse. Okay, so the graph of F consists of two line segments one from negative 2 2 okay so let me plot this negative or sorry negative 2 negative 2 to negative 1 0 okay so there's a line segment that goes to those two points and a second that goes from negative 1 0 to 1 2 okay so this right here Okay, so it says use F, use what we just did, um, and the graph to graph the inverse. Okay, so we just found out that the inverse of a function has uh, the domain and the range of the points reversed. Okay, so if I take this first point, negative 2, negative 2, and I flip them, I still get negative 2, negative 2. So that same point would still be, would be on the graph of the inverse. The second point negative 1, 0 would be 0, negative 1. Okay, so that would be right here. And then the point 1, 2 would become 2, 1, which would be right here. Okay, let me connect those points. And as you see, these two reflect across um, that, well, if I can get my line straight, um, let's see, here we go. They reflect across that um, imaginary line y equals x. And that would be the case with any graphs of, of any inverse functions. Okay, find the inverse of this function if x is greater than or equal to 0 and graph them both on the same coordinate system. Well, we can always graph uh, a function by making a t-table. So that's, how, that's what I'm going to do to graph this function right here. Alright, so if I want to make a t-table, 
and it says that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So let's start with 0, and we'll plug in some points greater than 0. Okay, so if I took that function, um, x squared plus 1, and I plugged in 0, then I would get 1, because 0 squared is 0, plus 1 is 1. Okay, so then if I took that function and I plugged in 1, 1 squared is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. And then if I took the function and I plugged in 2, 2 squared is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. Let's see if that's enough to graph this. Okay, so 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 5. All right, and then if we're going to graph the inverse of the function, we don't have to figure out the, the inverse um, of the equation and then plot the points or plug in points and all that stuff. All we have to do is take this and flip the x and the y. So we had 0, 1. We're going to do 1, 0, 2, 1, and 5, 2. Okay, so zero, uh, 1, 0. 2, 1, and 5, 2. And there we have the inverse of the function. And again, it reflects across that imaginary line uh, y equals x.